it is very nice to meet you. My name is Simon and I'm Timon's brother. Creating banger Halloween effects in Premiere can be insanely difficult. I mean, just ask Charlie. He's on a tight deadline and has only two hours left to finish these three effects. And he needs to get it published before midnight if he wants to get hired by a big video editing company. Anyway, Charlie is a very distracted individual and he needs help. So let's open up Premiere and show him how it's done. Effect number one, a magic fire popping out of a book. To start out, you want to film yourself opening a book, reacting to the imaginary fire and then closing it up. That's it for filming. Now in Premiere, make sure it's in the timeline like this. Next, you want to find a clip of fire with a dark background. I got mine from Storyblocks. Make sure the fire is selected and go to the effect controls. The first thing you want to do is set the blending mode to screen or add. That will remove the black background of your clip. With the motion property selected, you can easily position and scale the fire so it fits your book. But don't worry, you can always change this afterwards. Now, before we continue with the fire, we're going back to our magic book. We're gonna duplicate it by holding Alt and dragging it one track up. Then move the player to the first frame where the fire should start coming out of the book. This is where your book is opening. Now, select the clip and go to the effect controls. Go to the pen tool and click it to create a mask. Then draw a mask around the front of the book because the fire should be behind it. We're gonna animate the mask, which is why you need to hit that stopwatch button to create a keyframe. Make sure the mask is visible in the program monitor and move forward in time using the scroll wheel. Then adjust the mask together with the movement of your book. Keep doing that until you're at the end, where the book is closed again. Of course, play around with the feather until you're satisfied with the result. Are you still following Charlie? All right, awesome. Now it's time to go back to the fire clip. Oh yeah, and you can also trim away the sides of the top clip because you don't need those. With the fire clip selected, head over to the effect controls and move the player to the moment where the fire starts coming out of the book. Click the pen tool and draw a small mask. Then click the mask stopwatch icon again and animate the mask so that it looks like it's moving out of the book. Beautiful. Now move to the moment where you close the book again and set another keyframe. Then animate the mask so that it disappears back inside the book. Now we still need to change the color and make it glow a little. To do that, go to the window menu on top and find Lumetri color. Once it's open, go to the curves tab and then hue saturation curves. In here, you want to find the hue versus hue curve and drag the curve up or down to change the color. I just really love green, but you can do whatever you want. Next, find the VR glow effect in the effects library and drag it on your clip. Play around with these settings to create a glow you like. You can just copy mine and from there, create your own. I also animated the exposure and tint color of my main clip to make the green reflect on my face and the walls. That looks amazing. Oh god, guys, Charlie tried to film his own fire and almost burned down his computer. You, my friend, should have used Storyblocks. You could have just opened up the Storyblocks plugin and downloaded a fire clip from there without leaving Premiere. Besides specific stock clips, you can also download animation presets, transitions, or an insane amount of stock videos right from the plugin. Thank you Storyblocks so much for sponsoring this video. Imagine you dropped your camera off a cliff trying to get the perfect nature shot. Yeah, in that case, Again, you should have used Storyblocks. Storyblocks' curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more, you can download an unlimited amount of high quality assets for just one predictable subscription cost. No need to pay an expensive price per clip that you want to download. You can also enhance your social media videos by accessing an exclusive Storyblocks label music tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Storyblocks will keep you protected from copyright strikes so that you can focus on what actually matters. And that is creating. Besides that, you can save hours with pre-made motion graphics templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Apple Motion and DaVinci Resolve. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to starblocks.com slash Premiere Basics or just Click the link down below. Oh boy, Charlie has just 30 minutes left. He better stops wasting time scrolling on his phone and gets back to work. All right, effect number two, scary Halloween eyes. First, you gotta film yourself looking into the camera. I opened up my eyes like this for the dramatic effect, but you can do whatever you like. First, duplicate your video and trim it so it fits to the moment where your eyes turn red. Now make sure the duplicate is selected and go to the effect controls. Head to the frame where your eyes start opening and click the pen tool. 
cool. Then draw a mask around your left eye and try doing it precisely. Click the mask pad stopwatch icon to create a keyframe and animate your eye until it's fully opened up. Now simply click the track mask forward button and let Premiere do its thing. When it's ready, click the pen tool again and do the exact same thing for your right eye. When your eyes are perfectly tracked, set the feather to around 50. You will see why in a second. Now in the effects library, find the strobe light effect and drag it on your clip. Then in the effect controls, increase the strobe period. There's more than one way to create a white eye by the way, I just prefer this one. Back in the timeline, select your clip and right click it. Then choose nest. This is needed in order for the next effect to work correctly. Let's start with the core of the eye. First add the VR glow effect to the nested sequence. Then decrease the threshold and set the radius to around 200. Increase the brightness to around 10 and same thing for the saturation. Now we're gonna change the color of the eye. To do that, go to Lumetri and set the temperature all the way to orange. Add about 50% pink tint into it. Then increase the contrast and increase the whites to make sure the core stays white and the glow looks red. Back in the timeline, duplicate your nested sequence. We're gonna create a flare. To do that, find Gaussian blur and drag it on the duplicate. Then set the dimensions to horizontal and increase the blur a lot. If you want, you can add another Gaussian blur with the horizontal and vertical enabled. This will spread out the blur a little more. And that already looks sick. Now select both the nests and nest them again, just to make things easier later on. Now select it and head back to the effect controls. Go to the moment where your hands want to swipe away the red eyes. Right there, click the pen tool and draw a mask around your clip. Make sure the entire hand is inside the mask. Then click the mask pad stopwatch and move further in time. Now simply animate the mask until your eyes are fully visible again. To create the second effect which are these black eyes, move the nested sequence one track up and duplicate the bottom clip. Then trim the clip until the black eyes should be visible. Now just like with the first clip, create a mask around your eyes and track them. Oh and by the way, you could have also done this in the beginning by tracking the entire video in just one take. Now head over to the Lumetri panel and find the RGB curves. Then pull down the blacks until both your eyes are black. There you go. This looks awesome Charlie, but you only have 50 minutes left on the clock and oh lord, did your computer just crash? Let's use your laptop for now. Let's see if we can pull off the last effect which is a flying pumpkin effect that will eventually disappear with magic. First, find yourself some kind of rope you can use to attach your pumpkin with. I stole my cat's fishing rod and attached my pumpkin to it. Then let someone else hold the fishing rod to make it look like the pumpkin was floating. When you're done, act like you're making the pumpkin disappear with magic. From this point, you want to make an empty shot and wait for about 30 seconds. Now with the empty shot at the bottom and the other clip on top, select the clip on top and go to the first frame. In the effect controls, click the pen tool to create a mask. Next, set a mask path keyframe and go to the program monitor. Then draw a mask around the rope of the fishing rod. Then check the invert button to invert the mask. Then adjust the mask to keep the rope invisible. Do that until you're at the end of the clip. Good job, your pumpkin is already floating. Now it's time to make it disappear. To do that, move the playhead to the moment you're acting like you're removing the pumpkin. On that moment, add a cut to split up your video. Now select the right clip and remove the mask that's on there. Create a new one covering the entire pumpkin. Then simply check the reverse option to make the current pumpkin disappear. There you go, pumpkin gone. Now duplicate your clip again and remove the mask. Create another mask only covering the entire pumpkin. Once that's done, go back to the timeline and move the playhead to the first frame of the clip. Then right click it. Choose add frame hold. We want the pumpkin to stay put so we can animate it. In the timeline, nest the pumpkin so we can apply effects to it. Find the transform effect and drag it on the pumpkin. Head back to the effect controls and select the anchor point. Drag the anchor point to the position point and then drag the point back to the other point. We're basically setting the anchor point to the middle of the pumpkin. That way we can animate the scale and rotation properly. Speaking of that, set a keyframe on both the properties. Then move further in time and adjust the rotation. Then adjust the scale to point zero, ease out the first keyframe and boom, pumpkin gone. Now I also found a glowing animation on Storyblocks and applied the exact same animation on it. But on top of the effect, I also added a Gaussian blur effect and animated the blurriness from 0 to 4000. That makes it look like it completely extends. This effect looks really cool. Quickly Charlie, you only have 10 seconds left to upload the project. Ah, just in time. Next my brother Timon is gonna teach you the most important habits that every video editor should learn. Thank you guys so much for watching.